my friend is Pat Sloan here well I'm gonna be honest there isn't much that got done sewing wise since my last video was taped <laughs> which I taped yesterday so I didn't do much of anything but I have other stuff to talk about so it's still fun it's all fun uh, first of all let me remind you that we have the make-a-wish you're able this year for Make-A-Wish to buy a raffle ticket for an individual quilt. And there are so many options. It is just fantastic. You are having so much fun. I've, we've had great feedback and we are already raising more money than we did with an auction. Now some of you um, may not know how raffles versus auctions work with raffles there are a lot of government regulations about what can be a raffle because it has to be sure that it does not fall into the realm of gambling uh, so organizations have to do quite a few things to be able to ensure that they are doing a legal raffle and of course we're working with a very large organization make a wish and so it took a while and they had to be interested in having that done and, and so we're really happy that that all came together finally because the Fat Quarter Shop has been wanting to do this for quite a few years. It just was not able to put it into place until this year. And so this is the first time and we really, if you love it, buy a ticket because otherwise they may not do it again if it's not profitable. Um, but right now, so far, it looks like it's doing better than the auctions. So that is fantastic for raising more money for children's wishes. All right, what else do I have? The other day I was, uh, well, was maybe a couple weeks ago, I was interviewed by Sewing Parts Online and I, it was so fun. They are such a fun team that does the videos over there and all of the sort of marketing and things that you see, you know, putting out the posts and all that. And so Brian and Trisha interviewed me uh, and they, they ran it during one of their long live segments. So luckily on YouTube, I can link directly to my interview. Uh, and then if you want, you can go watch the rest of their uh, long, long segment. It was like an all day event that they did. So it, you know, where you could just pop in and pop out and they had sales and all kinds of things. So my interview went in there and they were so nice because they wrote and said, did I mind having it put in during there? And I'm like, no, that's great. So. Here is the uh, little screenshot that's been up here and in the description box below is a link so you can go directly to the interview and it was fun. They were great interviewers. They're great people. Um, super company if you're looking to buy a sewing machine, furniture, uh, sewing machine parts of course. They do have a lot of books and notions so take a look around. The two other big things I have today is I have the doggy parade, yay, of a lot of your doggy quilt tops and some are finished quilts then after that we're going to talk about the quilted witch quilt along or maybe the witchless quilted witch quilt along <laughs> oh yeah you know I have to be different sometimes I just have to but first let's do a doggy parade Let's start this doggy party with Amy's quilt with her little helper there and she has all kinds of doggy prints and I really love her background fabric. All right, we have a lot of doggies to look at. It is going to be so exciting. Here is April's and it is all quilted. Look at the um, lovely, lovely feathers She's right in front of the doggy's face and behind his bum is a <laughs> is is the feathers and then she did like verticals on the center part so cute bonnie's is just gorgeous it's in tulip pink fabric so i recognize that fabric there's a lot of what i use for the butterfly quilt here's bonnie's with an extra little blue border around it that just is darling that sets it off and she has a little reddish brown doggy <laughs> Chris has hers on light blue or it might be aqua it's hard to tell in photography but I love it it looks and she's got really nice grass still look at that look at that and her doggy is like a gray color so cute Christina is rocking the batiks look at those gorgeous batiks for her dog I love it love the contrasting ear too for for this, this little fella 
Christina is here in green, and she has Christmas prints. Hers is a Christmas doggy, all dressed up and ready to go. With his gray, and it's just, he's just so cute. Debbie has a sort of tan background with a, a black doggy, and just beautiful soft pinks and light blues and sort of coral and white. So, so cute. Donna, look at Donna's. This fabric is so cool. Big dots, big geometrics. This is the most interesting project to see how just running the strips like this for the doggy bodies um, with your different fabric selections. It is amazing. Gail's is warm and cozy. Her dog is ready for fall, just ready to go. <laughs> What are we? I'm lost here. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have a different Gail. It's another Gail, and her doggy has look at this beautiful background she used on there, and really fun prints. I love that blue that has kind of a brightish blue with a bigger geometric on it. So neat. Helena's oh so sweet. I love this fabric line. It turns out so cute, and the green. Do you see how that pops of green all through here? That looks great. Kay's doggy. <laughs> I think these are might also be batiks. They look fabulous. And she added a little eyeball to her dog. So, you know, you can do that. Kim's is done. Oh, so cute. And quilted and binding and ready to go and be snuggled up in those beautiful fabrics. We have Laura's, another fall doggy, and another one with, this is bones. Her background is bones. Aren't, aren't they cute? How stinking cute is that with the bones? Here is Leslie's. I'm trying to figure out what is on there. It looked like food, but I think it's actually big kind of folk art flowers on some of the prints. And she used a different doggy head on hers. A couple of people have done that in a different tail. So you see a little difference there. Uh, let's see. Let's do a look at Lisa's uh, on the black. That is a great background. I love how that looks. And I believe hers is also Batik's and she used the other doggy. And here is her inspector. Yep, yep. There he is. There he is resting on the job. Okay, <laughs> Lori Ann's, uh, another black doggy, and pinks and navy and light blue. So, so cute. I love it. Lynn has a fancy border. Look at her border. That is very clever, very effective. I also think these are probably batiks. Uh, and she's got kind of a yellow background or, you know, pale, pale yellow. It looks so nice. Lynn, this is vibrant. Love these colors. Look how juicy and vibrant that is. They also look like batiks. Uh, nice saturated colors. Nancy's is done. Super sweet. Now she did a little bit smaller version. Only three, only two, bo two rows of body instead of three. She wanted a particular size. It is so, so darling. Pamela's, we actually saw Pamela's start, her doggy start. And so now you could see the whole thing. I love it. Those fall, that fall fabric line is so pretty. Rhonda did a pillow, so those of you who are thinking about a pillow, here you go. It is stinking cute. Has a mushroom. See the mushrooms? A little doggy print. So adorable. Sheila also did the different the other dog uh, and has a little argyle sweater for a pillow. So cute. <laughs> can I say so cute any more times? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky's. I love this fabric. This fabric is spectacular as the dog. Doesn't it give a different vibe? The rust color, the navy, the whites. Oh, it's just a great, great fabric line. Leticia has added woof. Woof. And you might meet me at woof. <laughs> or you had me at woof, it says at the bottom. <laughs> woof. Woof. So we had a dog once that my mother-in-law thought that her bark wasn't uh, strong enough. So she would try to teach Brandy how to bark. She would go, Brandy, bark. Woof, woof, bark, bark louder. <laughs> like, no, don't tell her to bark louder. This is just so darling. I love, love, love the words on there. Okay, we've got it. we're almost done. We have another two to go. Shari's is Rambo. Look at Rambo. And I, I think that is Rambo's name. Oh, and I have to show you the front here. Look, Rambo, uh, the wording is done with a little puppy print, the puppy footprints. 
And our last one is by Evelyn, who was having a tremendous amount of fun. We have got the fire hydrant and the baby dog, and we got a little poop to clean up because, you know, it's dogs. And she said this one was the vote of her grandchildren, um, but she thinks that the quilt will probably end up living at her house. She also used rickrack for the stems on those flowers, but uh, this is so clever and cute. Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> Were they not fantastic? How fun to see so many options, so many different colorways. And I know there's a lot more. Uh, and some of the people that shared just the fronts when I did the other one, they did finish, but I didn't, you know, I grabbed some different people so that you could see it. And here's mine again, which has, I put the green border on. First, I put a cream color on the sides. So the sides would have a little break. I put a cream color and then I did the green strips that were left from the jelly roll and I will do binding still from the jelly roll and then there will be there's still some leftovers so I'm trying to debate on the back background you know, the backing rather the backing for I'm thinking I'm just going to go with the same fabric I did here which would be like a cream color um, I do have a green harmony wide back I do have a green but I'm kind of using it for something but I'm thinking I might just have to get some more uh, Call the warehouse, send me some more of that. Um, so I don't know, I, I have to go see where I put that because I put it somewhere special, of course. You know how that goes, somewhere special. Where is it? I think, let me see. I think I have it in here. Did I put it in here? Ooh, with the horse fabrics. No, I did not. Hmm. Oh, I know. I know. It's not in that part. It's over. It's over there. I think in the actual blue bin with the horse fabrics. Hold on. Let me get it. Okay. So in the blue bins, I put just sort of um, this the background that I'm using, and which is a harmony wide back, and and the blocks that I've done. So here are the blocks that I've done so far. Because uh, I, I was using this particular block because it gives me a lot of space to showcase the horse fabrics. And uh, we've talked about how they're almost all directional, which, will, which is interesting. All right, so now here we go. There's the green. That's the green Harmony white back. Don't you think that would be perfect? Perfect for my, my dog, my little wiener dog. I think, don't you think this green, let me hold this somehow. There. Don't you think that would be perfect for the backing? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So I'm just going to have to get myself some more of that, you know? The, the, I don't have unlimited storage here. So I asked the, you know, Benertex well, for my fabric lines to send me just a certain amount. And then um, when if I need more, they just send, they send me more then. But uh, I'm sort of low on this one. I think I have enough for the backing there. And one of our friends, speaking of horse fabrics, one of our friends, Laura in Missouri, had this piece of horse fabric and she said um, she saw me on different videos talking about it and she thought it would be something I might enjoy and use. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is so pretty. So pretty with the trees. <sighs> okay. So that is, that is what's going on with my doggy. I'm going to go onto the other side because I need a little space. I'm going to talk about the Quilted Witch Quilt Along. This is the Quilted Witch, which is a new pattern uh, by Lori Holt uh, with the Fat Quarter Shop. And so it is patchwork. It's all patchwork. You know, there's stars that you see on here. This kitty is absolutely what sold me on this. <clears throat> it is the cutest kitty, but there's pumpkins and then there's this great big witch and it's a pretty good size quilt It is 76 by 89 and as I was looking at this, you know, I thought it's um, it's really cute But I wonder what it'd be like just a little bit smaller and no witch I thought to myself. What if I made the quilted witches autumn garden? Where I made instead it made it a little bit shorter and in this area where she is instead add more pumpkins <clears throat> stars and some leaves uh, just to make it a little bit different and have something you know a little bit different but primarily it's all the same blocks except the leaf block will be a new one everything else will be just repeated of the same blocks from the book so this is a sew along from the book but let me show you what I did so it um, it was fun for me I really enjoyed 
sort of walking through and figuring out how to do this. And I just want to give you kind of a basic overview. The front page, the pattern for the my, my version, which is a smaller version, and we'll be walking through it as we make it. So I've got just the different sections sort of laid out where you will be doing like it says D. That'll be, you know, a certain page, which I tell you the page in the book. You're going to go there and get the size and all that. But anything that's sort of these white areas, you'll cut a new piece because it's uh, to get the layout. And so it is just normal construction like we always do. But I thought I would just show you a little bit here on this one how I, how I thought through it. I tell you, this kind of thing is fun for me. So I wanted to make it a little bit shorter. So what I did was pretty much, um, let's see, let me get a piece of paper. Oh, I thought I'd, hold on. So what I did was make it shorter so it'll only come to here. And like this whole section will be sewn exactly like the book. And then over here is just a little bit more narrow. But what will be happening is where the witch is, I've taken like these these stars here and they've come down here next to this pumpkin and then these all kind of shove over a little bit so this is a little more narrow and then down in here you will see in the layout will be all kinds of different stars from out here different stars and then I've also taken this little line of twinkle stars along the bottom and move that line up like right here. And so it's really just, you know, well, this space here and then here that I have uh, new, new sort of repositioning of the blocks and everything. And that's what, that's what you see here. This pumpkin right here is that pumpkin. And these stars on the left are these guys. And then right below it is a new section. And then underneath at the very bottom are these little twinkle stars. Here. They're just moved and shortened, like these spaces are a little shorter. So that's all laid out. And as we go through and make it, you know, we're going to go step by step and I will be telling you what's going on. Uh, and it's going to be really fun. And so, but if you enjoy The Witch and this is, you know, something you really want to do and you want that quilt that size, then of course this is also available. <laughs> you can just sew along like, like here. It's probably starting October 4th. I put October 4th. I don't know if 100% it'll start. It may have to shift another week. It depends. They're cutting kits. They actually have kits for this. Um, uh, and they're working on that. And so I was given a date of October 4th uh, tentative. And so I put that out there, but it might have to shift a little bit. Uh, and then it goes to May. So it is um, a little bit longer quilt along, um, but that's kind of fun. I enjoy having that. It's, um, and this layout for me was fun to do. Now there's also a cross stitch. The cross stitch is super darling. It looks like the quilt, there it is. Uh, there's also some accessory things for the cross stitch because you can buy a thread kit and it, ha and it comes with that ring, but you can buy the ring. You got the little pumpkin floss biddies. Um, those are so cute. And then for the quilt, they've also done a foundation papers. So there are half square triangles, of course, and flying geese units. And, they, and Fat Quarter Shop has put a box together of the papers that are used. So if you like doing those foundation papers, and or if you've maybe never tried it and wanted to give it a try, you can get a box of those that will correspond to the ones needed in the quilt along if you use them. I mean, you don't have to use them, but it is kind of a fun, fun, fun thing to have. And lastly, let me show you the fabric because, you know, I've talked about the fact that the fall fabric has just been hot as hot potatoes. You guys have bought everything every time it comes out. And so there is still some of this. This is called Shades of Autumn uh, with the aqua and there's these yummy plaids uh, and florals. And there's let me just show you. So we've got these leaf and pumpkins. Say I bought extra. I bought extra of some plaids, uh, acorns dark acorns on dark, you know, uh, these are all folded up. And then I looked around and I had this cross weave 
This cross weave is, I've used it before, I love it. It has a whole lot of texture with those, you know, lines through it. Right now on the Fat Quarter Shop, this particular cross weave is out of stock, but, um, you know, watch, it'll, if you have to have this one. Uh, but other, there's other cross weaves, I've linked you to the whole page, so you can look and see the whole page. Oh, here's the big floral. I don't know if this one's still available, but, um, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? I don't know. Might have to do a little border around mine or put it or use it on the back, you know, but I have enough that I can use it freely in the project. And so I've got oranges because, you know, when you look at this, we're going to do oranges because there'll be several pumpkins, the black cat, which could be chocolate brown, or I might just go in my stash and use some of that. And then the other fabrics will all be used for the blocks. And then the background will be this. Now the, um, you need six and a quarter yards. You know, I would get six and a half yards of the background uh, so that you just, you know, you have enough. And then you can look at the supply list and get all the other info online. Okay, there we go. <laughs> a spin around the studio, including looking at the adorable dogs that you all made. And I hope that a lot of you will join in. Maybe you will want to make the smaller version that I am doing without the witch. Uh, her, the witch's uh, autumn garden. I think that'll be, that'll be so cool. Look, no, I said fall because it's less letters. Fall garden. <laughs> Good fit across the top there, easier. All right, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.